Come on now. That you want to sing hallelujah. That you're saying amen. Can't help but celebrate being born again. There's somebody who loves you waiting at the door. It's home sweet home here in the house of the Lord. Come on now, that you want to sing hallelujah, that you're saying amen, can't help but celebrate being born again, there's somebody who loves you, he's waiting at the door, it's home sweet home here in the house of the Lord, bring your heartache, bring your burden, you can lay them down at the door. There is no fear, you belong here, step here into the house of the Lord. Bring your heartache, bring your burden, you, you can lay them down at the door. It is so clear, you belong here, step into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah, that you want to sing hallelujah, that you're saying amen. Can't help but celebrate being born again. Somebody who loves you is waiting at the door. It's home sweet home here in the house of the Lord. Bring your heartache, bring your burden. You can lay them down at the door. There is no fear, you belong here. Step into the house of the Lord. Good morning, St. Mark's. Let us stand and raise our voices to the Lord this morning with, This is Amazing Grace. breaks the power of sin and darkness who love is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in awe and wonder the king of glory the king above all kings this is amazing grace this is unfailing love that you would take my place that you would bear my cross you laid down your life that i would be set free Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Who brings our chaos back into order? Who makes the orphan a son and daughter? The King of glory, the King of glory. Who rules the nations with truth and justice Shines like the sun in all of its brilliance The King of glory, the King above all kings This is amazing grace This is unfailing love That you would take my place that you would bear my cross You laid down your life That I would be set free Oh, Jesus, I sing for All that you've done for me 
Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Oh, this is amazing grace. This is a mailing love that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross. You laid down your life that I would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. And let's continue our worship this morning <laughs> as we turn our hearts to the Lord with breathe. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. This is my daily bread. This is my daily bread.
morning. Isn't it a beautiful day to be in God's house? Amen? It was nice and cool. It was lovely walking outside today. And I am just so glad that y'all made it from outside to inside to spend a little time with me here today. Uh, And for those joining at home, we're so glad to have you with us as well. As we get started today, a reminder to everyone here that we have begun a new breakthrough prayer in our Breakthrough Prayer Initiative. And as we get started with our service today, I want to invite you all to join with me in saying that breakthrough prayer as our opening prayer this morning. You'll find that up on our screens. God, shine your light and break through our barriers to your desired future for our church and in our own lives. May your power ignite us to faithfully and courageously follow your path for us. Amen. Well, I'd like to invite you all to take this time, uh, just a moment, to say hello to your neighbors and maybe meet a new friend on the other side of the sanctuary this morning. Well, just a few announcements to share with you all this morning. Uh, Congratulations first and foremost to all of our high school grads. I know it has been a fantastically busy week for the students and for all of their parents. And that includes our very own Ryan on the announcement videos, who will be back with us next week after he has had a little break from the celebration of his own daughter's graduation. So congrats to all of them. And Ryan, thank you. Our congrats to Kira as well. We have a lot of great things going on here at The the Current here at St. Mark's like we Like we always do, there is so much more that we could talk about than what we have time for in a morning. So I'd like to draw your attention to the blue section in the middle of your bulletin that will give you some highlights of great things that are happening here at the church. Just a few to hit on and take a look at. We do have the Hoosier Brass Band concert next Sunday at 4, right here in the sanctuary, and an upcoming family Indians game on the 25th in the afternoon. Of course, we still have opportunities to help with the spiritual development of our youngest neighbors through helping at uh, Kids Church during the summer and by serving at Vacation Bible Camp as well. Information is in the bulletin on how you can do both of those things. This week, we're also kicking off our Walking as a Spiritual Practice group as we continue with the Breakthrough, Breakthrough Prayer Facebook group. Goodness, I can't speak today. Breakthrough Prayer Facebook group, I think there's too many P's in there, (laughs) that we began in the last uh, week or so, and you can find information about how to join us in both of those in the bulletin. Now, this week is also one of our special United Methodist special Sundays, and it is Peace with Justice Sunday. Uh, You can read a bit about that in your bulletin and online. There are special offering envelopes if you would like to partake in that for um, this special day. They can be found in the blue pew pads. I think some of the bulletins do have them as well. Please be sure, as we're speaking of those blue pew pads, to let us know that you were here with us today. Um, It gives us the opportunity throughout the week to be able to to pray for everyone by name who has been here and and who has celebrated the Lord's Day with us. So if you want to register your attendance here personally, it's in the blue pew pads, or there are opportunities to scan a QR code, or especially for those folks at home too, you can um, register your attendance by going to stmarkscarmel.org slash attend. And all of those are ways that uh, you can let us know that you were part of our celebration today. So, as we move into the, the scripture and message for today, there are actually two scriptures that I want to uh, have and highlight as the backdrop for our discussion today. Both of them come from Paul's letter to the Romans, which I have to share with you all is an epistle that I don't really love. There is so much in it that people over the millennia have used in ways that have brought harm to other people. Now, I have to tell you that I used to say that the book of Romans was the biggest reason why I didn't like the Apostle Paul. 
But over the years, I've come to understand that it's not really Paul that was the issue for me, but rather the way that some people have used Paul's words that really is the source of my consternation. Because you see, there's an awful lot of good stuff in Romans 2, not the least of which are the reminders that he gives us about what it means to love in our Christian context, as he shares in Romans 12 and 13. So from Romans 12, verses 9 through 15, let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to the strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice, and weep with those who weep. And we hear from Romans 13, verses 8 to 10, Owe no one anything except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. May God add wisdom to the reading, hearing, and understanding of these words today. Amen. And sorry, guys, I think I had a couple extra slides in there, which is why they've thrown you off a little bit with... <laughs> with the, uh, the slides today. But as we, as we dig into the discussion for this morning, I've got a pretty personal question to ask to everybody. Now, you don't have to raise your hands, but I'll raise mine again. How many of you have ever been on a diet? Yeah, okay, me too. In fact, it seems like a perpetual state for me. Now, you might remember at the beginning of the year, we talked a little bit about New Year's resolutions and how much gym memberships spike as the calendar turns and we face another year ahead of us in which we want to meet that fitness goal. Well, I can't say I was surprised this week to read an article from Bloomberg that confirmed that June, the beginning of the summer, sees the highest spike in fitness center enrollments since that rush at the beginning of the new year. Even though Women's Health Magazine also this week suggests that September might be the best month to start dieting because that's after the summer but before the holidays. Now, no matter when you've taken this plunge, if you have ever been on a diet of any kind, you know that it takes discipline, right? You have to follow certain rules. You have to avoid certain foods, perhaps. So today, I thought I'd share some of my favorite diet rules that have been gathered over the years from many, many friends, family members, and maybe a few Facebook posts, in case you might need them someday. Okay, you ready for these? First, if you drink a diet soda with candy, they cancel each other out. I actually had a sister-in-law who had me convinced of that when I was about 10 years old. (laughs) Foods used for medicinal purposes have no calories, and this includes chocolate that is used for energy. Movie-related foods, they are much lower in calories simply because they are part of that entertainment experience. And cookie pieces, cookie pieces contain no calories because the process of breakage causes leakage. Now, if you eat standing up, the calories go to your feet and you can walk them off. Food eaten at Christmas has zero calories, courtesy of Santa. And stressed is dessert, spelled backwards. So it's kind of okay to eat dessert when you're stressed. Now, 
Obviously, these rules are pretty silly. And if we followed them, I doubt we'd lose any weight at all and probably pack on a little bit more, except maybe that one related to movie-related foods. I mean, come on, popcorn is a vegetable after all, right? <laughs> but our lives, our entire lives are filled with rules, and most of them aren't so silly because they're necessary to maintain order in our world. I mean, just for example, can you imagine what the world would be like with people driving around in cars with no rules? I don't think I'd be driving. The fact is that we need to have rules in order to avoid chaos in our lives. And now rules, of course, come from many sources. But as people of faith, the most important source of our rules is our Bible, right? And naturally, as people of faith, we think of the Ten Commandments, I know you can all read them, right, um, as the basis of many of our rules. They're what the ancient Hebrew people called the law. But apparently, ten rules weren't enough. Because in the book of Leviticus, we find another 247 rules. And if that weren't enough, the ancient Jewish rabbis compiled a list of 613 additional rules. So by the time Jesus came along, the lives of the Jewish people were filled with rules. But Jesus understood that over 850 rules were probably about 848 too many. Because when he was asked what the most important rule was, his response was simple. We know it. Love God and love your neighbor. Simple rules that were easy to remember and, and easy to follow and covered everything that we needed to know. Now, let's fast forward to the 18th century, to the age of reason. The age of reason, when the world was changing and, and people were changing too. Organized religion was no longer as important, and people were no longer inclined to follow rules set forth by the church. That doesn't sound too unusual to us, does it? Now, it was during this time that John Wesley began what would become known as the Methodist movement. And as a young Anglican priest, Wesley encouraged his students at Oxford to become more methodical in the ways that they expressed their faith. They kept a set study of prayer, study, and service, nurturing their faith while they tended to the needs of the poor and the oppressed and those who were in prison. And because they kept to this schedule, this methodical way of ensuring that they nurtured their faith and cared for others, their less than pious friends called them Methodists, a name that was meant to be an insult but that became for them a badge of honor. In time, as you all know, the Methodist movement grew, and it didn't take long for the always methodical Wesley to realize that the group of Methodists that were gathering and growing needed a little more structure and a little more guidance. So, in 1743, he wrote what's become, what has become known as the General Rules. And like Jesus, he kept them simple. Do no harm, do good, and stay in love with God. Three simple rules that became the hallmarks of the Methodists. Three simple rules that are meant to guide our lives and our faith. As Methodists, these rules are the foundation on which our church was built and has grown. Now, just a few weeks ago, our fellow travelers shared the wisdom of these three simple rules with our confirmation students in their charge to the confirmation class. I spoke to a few people that shared with me that prior to that part of the confirmation service, they had not heard of these rules or had ever discussed what they meant. So it's kind of hard to follow them if you've never heard of them, right? So for the next three services that I get to be here with you, I want to spend just a little bit of time focusing on these rules using this little book 
written by Bishop Reuben Job as a way of guiding our discussion. So the first of Wesley's general rules is do no harm. And that's what we're talking about today. The entire rule, mind you, is a little bit lengthy and it's quite detailed. And it's contained in our United Methodist Book of Discipline. So if you want to see that, we can certainly facilitate that for you. But the essence of the rule, as Bishop Job focuses on it, is this. Do no harm by avoiding evil of every kind. Now, it sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? Especially for those of us that believe in the teachings of Jesus Christ, isn't it? But doing no harm isn't necessarily as easy as it sounds. In this book, Three Simple Rules, Bishop Job makes the point that doing no harm means being a true disciple of Jesus. It means abandoning the ways of the world and being obedient to God. We have to be willing to set aside our own ways and surrender ourselves to God's will. For most of us, even those who profess to be Christ followers, surrendering to God's will is hard. It's hard because it means up giving up our personal power, and we're giving it up in favor of God's, and, and giving up one of our most cherished possessions, that control we have. We give up the certainty that we are right and others around us are wrong. Now, it's hard, but it's not impossible if there's an honest and careful and prayerful consideration and a willingness to make this kind of change. When we're confronted by someone who intends to do us harm, our natural instinct is to protect ourselves, isn't it? And when that person is successful in doing harm, our next inclination is to harm them back because the way of the world is retaliation. The way of the world is the way of escalating revenge. And we see it around us all day, every day. But the way of Christ, the way of Christ is reconciliation. Jesus tells us in the Sermon on the Mount, you've heard it said, an eye for an eye, but I say to you, do not resist an evildoer. If someone strikes you on one cheek, turn the other and let him strike you there as well. If someone tries to take your coat, give him your shirt as well. Resisting evil instead of seeking revenge involves trusting God to be in control, which is really hard for us humans to do. Julio Diaz was a 31-year-old social worker. Every night, he would end his hour-long subway commute one stop early so that he could eat at his favorite diner. But one night, as Julio stepped off the train and onto the nearly empty platform, his evening took an unexpected turn. As he walked toward the stairs, a teenage boy approached and pulled out a knife. Give me your money, the teen said to Julio. So Julio pulled out his wallet and gave it to the teen. And as the teen began to walk away, Julio said to him, Hey, wait, it's starting to get cold. If you're going to be robbing people for the rest of the night, you'll need to stay warm. Here, take my jacket. The teen looked at Julio, stunned by this exchange. He asked him, Why are you doing this? Well, Julio replied, If you're willing to risk your freedom for a few dollars then I guess you must really need the money. All I wanted to do was get dinner. Hey, what, why don't you join me? So Julio and the teen walked to the diner and they took a seat in the booth and as they sat there, the manager came by and then the dishwashers and then the waiters and, and Julio greeted them all like they were his closest friends. After they ordered, the, the teen asked him, you know everybody here, do you own this place? No, Julio replied, I just eat here a lot. But you're even nice to the dishwasher, said the teen. Well, 
haven't you been taught to be nice to everyone? Yeah, the teen replied, but I didn't think people, people actually behaved that way. Their food came, and as they ate, Julio asked the teen what he wanted out of life, but the young man couldn't answer, or he didn't really know what to say. When the bill arrived, Julio said, I guess you're going to have to pay for this because you have my money, which means I can't pay. But if you give me my wallet back, I'll take care of the bill, my treat. And without even thinking, the teen returned the wallet. Then Julio gave him a $20 bill, but not without asking for something in return. When interviewed, Julio said, I asked for his knife. He later told his own mother that same thing, and, and he said he reached into his pocket, and he gave it to me. Now, Julio could have reacted to this teenage robber by calling the police or trying to fight him off, but instead, Julio chose to respond out of love. He chose to do no harm, which probably changed that teenager's life. Doing harm is, is destructive, whether physically, mentally, emotionally, or spiritually. It can destroy our lives, and it can destroy the lives of those of us, of those who are around us. But when we make the commitment to do no harm, we acknowledge that every living creature is part of God's creation. We bring healing instead of hurt, wholeness instead of division. Harmony instead of discord. Love instead of hate. Doing no harm has the ability to transform the world. So then how do we go about doing no harm in our world today where we can see people so divided and spiteful? Well, there's a few simple things. We can choose to use our words in a way that does not cause division and strife. We can choose to respect other people even when we strongly disagree with them. We can choose not to vilify someone because we disagree with their politics or their faith commitment. That means on social media. Doing no harm is treating people like we want to be treated and not taking advantage. Being fair even if we're not treated fairly. It means living our lives in a way that allows us to be the hands and feet of Jesus, showing others the image of God that is within each and every one of us. It means being good stewards of the earth that God gave us to manage. Doing no harm means we look out for one another, that we treat each other with respect and dignity. Now, in his book, Bishop Job writes this, To do no harm means that I will be on guard so that all of my actions and even my silence will not add injury to another of God's children or to any part of God's creation. As did John Wesley and those in the early Methodist movement before me, I too will determine every day that my life will always be invested in the effort to bring healing instead of hurt, wholeness instead of division, and harmony with the ways of Jesus rather than with the ways of the world. When I commit myself to this way, I must see each person as a child of God a recipient of love unearned, unlimited, and undeserved, just like myself. And it is this vision of every other person as the object of God's love and deep awareness that I too live in, that loving presence that can hold me accountable to my commitment to do no harm. Doing no harm is about expressing the love of Christ towards ourselves and towards others, just like the Apostle Paul wrote in his letter to the Romans. 
hate evil and hold on to what is good. Love each other. Be happy in your hope. Bless people who harass you. Bless and don't curse them. Be happy with those who are happy and cry with those who are crying. Consider everyone as equal and don't think that you are better than anyone else. Don't pay back anyone for their evil actions with evil actions, but show respect for everyone else. You must love your neighbor as yourself because love is what fulfills the law. Like so much of what we're do, what we're called to do as Christ followers, love is the key to doing no harm. Because when we demonstrate true Christian love towards others, our world, and even ourselves, we're making a commitment to do no harm. Now, maybe the greatest consequence that comes from, from choosing to live this rule of love and life is that we are transformed into a people who live like Jesus lived. And maybe our transformation can help to transform those around us in our communities and in our world. Do no harm. Do good, stay in love with God. Three simple rules that change the way of the world in John Wesley's day, and they can change the world today if we choose to grab onto our Methodist heritage and to live as God intends for us to live. Amen? Amen. We're going to enter into a, a time of prayer and, and time for offering and meditation and contemplation. And as is our uh, uh, custom here at St. Mark's, we'll begin with a, a moment of silent prayer. And then during some special music from, uh, from our worship team, we'll be able to consider uh, lifting to God those things that are on our hearts today. And in turn, listening for what God may be saying back to us. We'll then uh, be led in a brief pastoral prayer, and I'll ask those of you who are led and able to join with me in the Lord's Prayer. But for now, let's enter into this time of silent prayer with open hearts and open minds. Of water, earth, and sky The heavens are your tabernacle Glory to the Lord on high God of wonders beyond our galaxy You are holy Universe to praise your majesty. You are holy, holy, Lord of heaven and earth. Lord of heaven and earth. In the morning, I will celebrate the light. When I stumble in the darkness, I will call your name by night. 
not a pointless beyond our galaxy. You are holy, holy. Universe declares your majesty. You are holy, holy. Lord of heaven and earth. Hallelujah to the Lord of heaven and earth. Hallelujah to the Lord of heaven and earth. Hallelujah to the Lord of heaven and earth. wonders beyond our galaxy. You are holy, holy. Precious Lord, reveal your heart to me. Father, hold me, hold me. The universe declares your majesty. You are holy, the Lord of heaven and earth. Hallelujah. To the Lord of heaven and earth. Hallelujah. To the Lord of heaven and earth. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Let's pray. God of grace, we come to this place from different paths on different journeys as your servants. Some of us struggle with doubt and loss as we question your presence in the midst of our pain and the pain of those we love. Grant these the patience to let your love seep into the brokenness. Some of us come before you with uncertainties about what we believe, what you would have us to do with our lives and and how we might serve you. Grant these the willingness to honestly doubt so that the question of faith and servanthood might be honestly answered rather than apathetically accepted. Some of us come before you with a joy that knows no bounds in the celebration of love and the fulfillment of dreams. Grant these the grace to share their joy with others. We come from a variety of pathways, O God, yet we acknowledge that we are all on the same road, united in our efforts to be your people, a people with a mission to bring your love to the world through the one in whose footsteps we strive to follow, Christ our Lord, who taught us to say when we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us the trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. To Amen. Now, just as Christ taught us to pray together, he also called us to remember him each time that we gather at his table to break this bread and to drink from this cup. We gather today to do so, lifting our hearts and giving thanks to God. And on the night before meeting with death, Jesus took the bread gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, 
gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So remembering Christ's sacrifice, we ask, O God, that today you pour out your Holy Spirit on those of us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and and fruit of the vine, that in the breaking of this bread and the drinking of this fruit, we may know the presence of the living Christ and be renewed as the body of Christ for the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, and in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. I'd like to invite those who are helping to serve this morning to come forward. This is the Lord's table, not St. Mark's table or the United Methodist table, but the Lord's table and all are welcome. As you do come forward this morning, please do come down the middle aisles. Um, Please uh, receive the bread and, and take of the juice, or if you would prefer, we do have individual juice servings over here if you're not comfortable with taking by intinction. And on my right, your left, we do have the all-in-one gluten-free packages as well. So with that, I I invite you to come. The table is set. Please come.
Let's pray. We thank you, gracious God, for this meal which you have given. As we gather around our own tables in the days ahead, might we be reminded of this table where all are welcome and love is always the answer to hate. Amen. And I'd like to invite you all once again to stand as you're led and able and and join us in our closing song today. It's one that you can clap and move to. I know you can. All the people said amen. You are not alone If you are lonely When you feel afraid You're not the only We are all the same In need of mercy To be forgiven and be free It's all you've got to lean on But thank God it's all you need And all the people said amen And all the people said amen Give thanks to the Lord For His love never ends And all the people said amen If you're rich or poor Well, it don't matter, weak or strong, you know love is all we're after. We are all broken, but we're all in this together. God knows we stumble and fall. And He so loved the world, He sent His Son to save us all. And all the people said amen. Whoa, and all the people said amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for His love never ends. And all the people said, Amen. Blessed are the poor in spirit who are torn apart. Blessed are the persecuted and the poor in heart. Blessed are the people hungry for another start. For theirs is the kingdom, the kingdom of God. And all the people said amen. Whoa, and all the people said amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for his love never ends. And all the people said amen. And all the people said amen. Whoa, and all the people said amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for His love never ends. And all the people said amen. And all the people said amen. Thank you. See, y'all do know how to move and dance. And I want to say a special thank you to Meredith for joining us up here as part of our worship team today. And just as a reminder to all of those out, you, out there that I know have some musical ability, we have a place for you too. Yes, I'm looking at you. <laughs> Tambourines work. There you go. There you go. Oh, as we leave our, our place and, and our space together today, may the God of amazing grace give you eyes to see beauty everywhere, hands to do good to everyone, and hearts to bless all who you meet. Let's go change the world. Amen. And all the people said amen. Whoa, and all the people said amen. Give thanks to the Lord for his love never ends. And all the people said amen. And all the people said, Amen.